This is the last time I'm rewriting the voxel engine, I promise. Alright, but this is the last time. Are you sure a custom engine in C-sharp is right over Unity? I'm sure of it. I am sure of it. I want to rewrite it in Rust. Hi, I'm Destiny. Over my six plus years of software engineering, I spent a- <clears throat> Over my six plus years of software engineering, I spent a lot of my time working on voxel engines. I'd say voxel games, but I haven't released a single one. Yet. Whether it was Unity or my custom engines in both Java and C-sharp, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out the right way to build a voxel engine. In this video, I want to talk about my pile of voxel engines, why Rust is my choice going forward, and the game I'm developing, Voxelaris. Oh, and also, I'm not using a game engine. No bevy here. You should know me enough already from my last four videos that I keep my dependencies slim, and I'm not making any exceptions here. So let's dive right into it. First, what am I making and what the hell are voxels? You see this? A cube can be a voxel. Put billions of these on a fixed 3D grid and you might have a voxel game. Minecraft allows you to fully edit these worlds to your heart's content, Vintage Story allows you to do in-world crafting, and Teardown prefers you just blow it all up. So just a bunch of cubes? Sounds easy. <laughs> <sighs> My project folder is a graveyard at this point. I've spent years and years struggling to figure out how to just get a bunch of stupid cubes on the screen. Which leads me to the premise of this video. Why I rewrote the whole thing again, but in Rust this time. My previous iteration of this project I alone spent two years working on. I built the engine in C Sharp, and that history is available here on this channel. It is by far my most complex and polished iteration yet of building my dream voxel game. It has mechanical energy, furnaces, chests, crafting, tools, but it's heavily flawed, with little direction and a rotting code base. Nulls, exceptions, they all boiled out of unexpected places and caused me headaches working on new features or fixing old ones. Nothing felt safe. It honestly felt like I couldn't trust myself, let alone other developers. I was putting up defenses and guards to protect code from other code. It was toxic and hostile. It should have been easy. See my video on Rust Autism Correct Code for more on that, though. So this engine itself has gone through multiple major iterations in its lifetime, but it was never enough and it prevented me from moving forward. Earlier this year, though, I tried out Rust again. I'd given it a shot before but found it hard to work with and couldn't get my head around it. After spending some time with it, I decided to do some small experiments to see if I could get it working for what I was doing. And well, I've built this channel talking about programming in Rust, falling back in love with programming again. So what's the difference this time? Rust allows me to be more confident in my changes and the dependencies that I, well, depend on to make my game. If a library panics, that's game over for the executing code, and developers and their libraries alike reflect the drastic measure. In languages like C-sharp, they're everywhere and you need to inspect every line of code to ensure it won't or give up and wrap it in a try-catch. And even if it doesn't throw an exception, it might just return null for fun. Why do we accept this? It's extremely unpredictable behavior that puts developers on defense instead of allowing them to focus on the information in front of them. Modern code bases are large, and we can't expect developers to keep the entire thing in their heads all the time. Rust shows you the complexity. It doesn't hide it away and assume the developer knows all. That isn't to say that it won't let you tie yourself in a loop, but that it avoids common pitfalls that compilers can account for. It's so much better than finding out in production that your three lines of code that you deployed last week can take down a company for a day. Let's shift gears a bit though and talk about the new engine. After learning the great power of Rust, I built a few demos to prove to myself building my game was possible in Rust. One of these was a voxel rendering demo, and the other a lighting demo. The rendering demo wasn't much, but proved the basic concept. And while I would love to go over the lighting demo here, that's for another video when I bring it into the game. After a bit more work, I got the original rendering demo I made working with my own voxel image format. This 64x8 image, which is 8 layers of 8x8 voxels, while only used to show a shell right now, once implemented fully will be used to give voxel models more depth and allow complex shapes. The same system will be used to render things like flowers and grass in the future, which should look really nice. At this point, I let the project brew for a bit in my head before I took the full plunge of committing to moving the engine to Rust. This is a good time to talk about what my goals for this engine and its game are, though. My goal is to build a game heavily inspired by Minecraft, Vintage Story, and Factorio. I loved Minecraft mods like Buildcraft, Industrialcraft, and Logistics Pipes. You could honestly say these mods were my introduction to factory games like Factorio that I've spent countless hours in. Vintage Story is here because it inspired some aspects of where I want to take the game visually and its unique approaches to crafting. During your progress throughout the game, I want the technology the player has access to to get more and more advanced, going from basic hand tools to full PCB manufacturing with pick-and-place machines. 
It's some lofty goals, but with rust under my belt now, this seems far more possible than before. So what's the current progress? After getting all these goals in mind, I sat down and spent a long time reading over my old code in C Sharp, trying to understand what I expected my voxels to be capable of and how they would integrate into the larger code base and modding capabilities. What I settled on was this beautiful piece of code. Because I wanted modding to be both officially supported and well done, most functionality of a vox will happen through these events and will in the future likely be done using Lua. I've integrated things like the current rotation and color of a voxel here as I feel that these rules are both common and should work universally. I want to allow players to change the world as they see fit, as this should be fun for the players instead of tedious. For now, these are simply defined in Rust. While a bit verbose, you aren't intended to be creating more than one of each type of these anyways. Globally, one of each variant of a voxel will be created over the lifetime of the engine automatically. The variants for rotation and color are all generated lazily as they're required, and we'll copy this original to create them. Grass, for instance, has the ability to die if the block above it isn't transparent. This event on random tick occurs for a few voxels per tick per chunk. The same system is used in Minecraft and is great for making changes over time feel natural, like grass growing and dying or leaves decaying. This makes grass always feel like it's in the right place. Calls to methods like random tick expect a voxel to be returned. Voxels are read-only. If a voxel needs to be changed, it will be replaced, not modified. Since these voxels are a simple reference counter we are passing around, it is easy to pass it back. These are optional, so only blocks that implement them even need to do this step. Otherwise, we'll skip it and consider that random tick complete. All of these systems I have built out so far took me years to initially understand and build. But now transitioning them into Rust, it all is starting to actually click together. Since I wrapped all of my world interactions into one centralized place, transitioning into having chunks was simple as I updated the two methods for getting and setting voxels, and replaced the underlying data structure with a dictionary of chunks. With chunks in place, I added a quick method that generates trees. These boxy leaves feel a bit off, so I implemented leaf decay to ensure leaves were connected to wood and within 5 blocks distance. In the future, I'll be re-implementing my more complex procedurally generated trees, but for now these make the world feel a bit better and more alive. Perhaps I could even do the inverse of this in the future and make leaves spread over time. After all of this was said and done, I implemented basic quote-unquote lighting, which just changes how much each face is lit based on the direction the voxel face is pointing. 100% on top, 80% east and west, 60% north and south, and 40% down. It gives the world quite a glow up. It's a simple change, but makes it so much easier to tell the relation of objects in the world. With all this said and done, this is a solid foundation to build my new voxel game off of, which accounts for many of the things I have learned over the years. While my work here isn't done yet, moving from C-sharp to Rust has been overall an improvement. I don't have to fear making changes as much anymore, as the compiler is able to catch far more issues before it allows my code to run. I haven't mentioned it up to this point, but Rust is significantly faster than C-sharp. Yes, yes, I can hear the comments now. But I had been using c -sharp for years, and my expectations of performance of a computer were drastically lower than reality. I can't compare my old and new engine performance directly as they don't have the same feature set, but I can say that my experience has been far better. I haven't had to resort to odd workarounds, and I haven't had a need to optimize code or even use release mode. Overall, this went extremely well, and I'll be committing to rewriting my entire engine and game in Rust. That's it for this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future, go ahead and leave a like, and if you'd like to follow along with the journey, subscribe to the channel. I hope you all enjoy. On the left is what YouTube thinks you'd like next, and on the right is a playlist of videos where you can hear me talk more about Rust.